When we left off last year, Station 5, located at 6501 Lower Miller Creek, was still under construction. The station has been completed and is now open and fully operational. Here is a quick walkthrough of the finished station. Fire Station 2, located at 247 Mount Avenue, was originally built in 1954. The bond issue that asked for Station 5 also asked for a more modern Fire Station 2. The original historic Station 2 would need to be raised to the ground to accommodate a new station that has the capacity to house an expanding fire department and modern fire apparatus. Currently, Station 2 is still under construction. The station is scheduled to be opened in late winter or early spring of 2008. With the completion of Station 2's rebuilding, the fire department will need to staff the city's five fire stations with new firefighters. A portion of these hirings have already started to help stagger the number of recruits in training. The recruits' main goal will be to become confirmed firefighters. Chief Steenberg, I understand you might have someone you'd like to introduce to us this evening, is that correct? Chief Steenberg, I note that we have a complement of firefighters here this evening. Anything we need to know? Mayor Engen, City Council members, these are our two newest firefighters. I shouldn't say newest, but soon to be appointed firefighters. Nate Oje and Brett Cuniff.
Mayor Ingen, members of the council, I'd like to introduce firefighter trainees Luke Dunning and Brent Myers. And we're here tonight for your confirmation for their appointment as firefighters. And we respectfully request the council confirm their appointments as firefighters with our department. What does becoming a confirmed firefighter mean? Becoming a confirmed firefighter means that now they truly are a member of the fire department, um, a full, full member, that they've accomplished all their rookie training, which would include not only their basic firefighter skills and EMS skills, but also they've learned the, the streets of the city, you know, they've, they've had some experience going on calls, and, and they understand how, how it works. Hi, my name is Blake Myers, and I'm 24 years old. My name is Rob Hoos, and I'm 25 years old. My name is Casey Scott, and I'm 27. John Petroff, and I'm 25. Uh, Andy Grobeck, and 25. What can the new hirees expect in their first three months with MFD? They're, what they can expect is uh, a total review of all firefighting skills um, that they'll need as a tailboard firefighter, uh, an evaluation of their EMS skills, and once we evaluate and identify areas needing improvement, we'll hit those. Uh, and then, depending on the time of year, they may receive some specialized rescue training in that period as well. The reason firefighters are EMTs, it's a condition of employment here. Uh, everybody we hire now uh, has to be at least an EMT basic. Uh, the advantage of that is, is when an individual comes to work for us, they've at least had the class. Um, historically, MFD provided or, or produced that training for the individual, and that was also, uh, it took up a fair amount of that individual's time. And then, Occasionally, not just at MFD, but at Nationwide, you get individuals that come in thinking they'll just do firefighting, and then when they get asked to become an EMT and start responding on medical calls, they, it's not really what they're looking for. So having a firefighter candidate come in as an EMT, we at least have a baseline understanding, or they have a baseline understanding of, of medical training. How did you decide you wanted to become a firefighter? Uh, well, really, out of college, I got a business degree here at the University of Montana, and I decided in the four years there that I pretty much didn't want to didn't want a, a, a career in business. Um, going going to work with, in a suit and tie every day and going to a cubicle really is not what I wanted to do. Well, I was actually just out of high school, and I decided to try it out as a part paid in Miles City just to get on part time to see what it was like and. Got into a couple fires and enjoyed the adrenaline rush. So. Shortly after graduating high school, that this was the line of work. It has everything that I like about a job, with the shift work and the physical aspect of it, and the high intensity, quick acting, think on your feet kind of thing. I started back in high school, just kind of wanted a job with a different environment every day, and where I could help people out, assist in the community. And I went to college for it, and, and I just progressed from there. Well, I guess number one is just helping the community living in Missoula my whole life. Uh, I know it's a very rewarding job. Um, I guess that'd be the reason behind it. This group of five that's in training right now, the very first day they arrived with to work for MFD, they received a written exam. They will receive at least two more written exams within those 90 days. They will also attend training on a daily basis and at certain points within that training, if it's feasible, let's say an extrication practice for them, we will incorporate medical training into that. Um, if there's an interesting call that maybe the engine company goes on, when they come back, we'll have sort of a debriefing and that will evolve maybe into an anatomy uh, uh, class for the rookies. How do their individual backgrounds and previous training play into how they adapt with MFD? We hire everyone with the assumption that they have no uh, pertinent background. We start everyone at the bottom, uh, assuming that uh, they know nothing. Now, many of them do have a background, and how that helps them is they're just able to hit the ground running a little bit quicker. I started with uh, Wildland Fire in 2001, and that really interested me, um, being able to uh, go out on fire calls and uh, work, in, work in the backcountry. Went to get my fire science degree okay. um, over in Helena. Since I started my education with Montana, um, 
went through the Department of Defense Fire Academy. I'm in the Army Reserve, so they sent me through that. <clears throat> went through Wildland Firefighter Training with the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Oh, I volunteered out in East Missoula for two years. Um, got my EMT. Um, been working on wildland fires. Uh, went and got my firefighter one. Um, helped instruct uh, first responders class. I did seven years of wildland firefighting, and uh, you know, just just uh, development over the years. Our new hires start with 90 days of the training officer. Within that period, we introduce them to sort of MFDs, protocols, our thought process, and our training process. I was a teacher, so I worked the daily the daily eight to five, or not eight to five, but uh, Monday through Friday. And I like this because uh, it switches things up. I really like it. I've never had a schedule like this before, so it uh, it was pretty cool. And I like working nights too. So, what can new firefighters expect after five days per week of training with you, and then moving to combat shifts? It's a it's a it's an adapt uh, adaptation for sure. Um, we try to to get them into the routine of shift work expose them to it early um, in their initial phase uh, so they'll know what they need to do once they get on shift but actually working shift work going on calls that's probably the biggest one is they, they now are able to go on real calls and and they can put that training that's been theoretical up to this point into practice what was your favorite part of the training getting to do some of the burn tower stuff the I don't have a huge fire background so actually getting to go through the motions and do stuff was really cool. Uh, the hands-on, doing all the, you know, raising ladders, um, pulling hose. I like to go into the burn tower and actually doing live fire and stuff like that. When we go to take care of a patient, a citizen, this is not one person working on this individual while two or three or four others stand back. The advantage of having everybody being at least medically trained. Now, maybe you have one EMT or two EMTs and a paramedic on, a, on an engine company. <clears throat> because it's a team effort, the EMTs can be doing one or two things with that victim, the paramedic can be doing another thing, but the thought process should all be relatively streamlined. We should all be thinking the same thing, we all understand what we're doing. I think it would be very difficult if there was a non-EMT watching, say, a paramedic and EMT work on a, a car crash victim. How would that individual help? not knowing what's going on. Um, we all need the same training so we understand the process and understand the interventions that we provide. Uh, what transitionary steps need to be made to ride the engine as a member of the engine crew? They just need to know what their expectations are, what their captain is uh, going to expect from them, uh, and where their role fits in as a team member. Uh, during their initial 10 week uh, training, they're working primarily as an individual, um, and the, the, the task that they're doing, they're doing individually. Now they're going to take those same skills now and, and incorporate them into a team structure. Uh, Tony did a great job of attention to detail, knowing the little things, knowing where everything's at, uh, getting in a routine, so you, you're doing the same thing every day as far as getting ready. So you're finding, once you get your routine down, you're doing things without even really thinking about it, and I thought that was really good. Uh, I think Tony uh, really prepared us to like um, just the expectations this department has for us, and he did a good job giving us the tools to um, kind of understand how to do stuff and set us up for success really well. Think about the the breadth of medical emergencies we can deal with. We could deliver a baby at 9 a.m go to a car crash at 10 a.m., go to a shooting at noon, and go to um, uh, somebody maybe having a, a cardiac emergency at 2 o'clock. We like to see some street knowledge and some experience running some calls. What are your uh, expectations and responsibilities before you get into the union? I still stand by our motto with saving lives, protecting property, and ease suffering, and also valuing our professionalism, whether we're on the job or off the job, and just doing the best I can. I think just trying to learn a little bit every every shift and get better and my expectations are just to, um, I don't know, just keep doing, doing 
doing better and better, I guess. They go into the union in six months. Uh, what they have to do is, is be successful, obviously, in their, their 10 week initial phase. And they go out on shift, and they need to be successful uh, and in that phase as well. Knowing that you're one of the first guys hired when we're hiring, going to be hiring a whole bunch of new firefighters in the next year and a half, what preparations are you making knowing that you're going to be looked up to as a leader and one of the guys that the younger guys can come to for questions? I just try to learn every aspect of my job, try to be proficient. I think the biggest thing I'm, I'm doing is making sure I do everything that I'm supposed to do for my first year to get confirmed, whether it be learning the streets or driving, making sure that I hold myself to the highest standard of, of getting everything done and knowing what I'm supposed to do. That way when they come in, if they have any questions, like prior guys have done for us, they've came in and, and made sure that we knew what was going on and how everything worked, and I'd make sure I return the favor to the new guys. Well, it kind of gives you more of a a sense of responsibility for all the younger guys that are coming and uh, it kind of makes our class uh, grow up a little bit faster and it's really uh, it's going to be a benefit of the city for us to um, really know our job and be the best firefighters we can be um, early in our, on our career. As union fire, fi firefighters, what roles and responsibilities must they f fulfill prior to becoming confirmed? Again, they, they need to learn all the streets in the city of Missoula. They need to learn how to drive and operate the various apparatus uh, that we have here. And they need to just understand how they fit in as a, a member of this team. What knowledge, uh, knowing that you're going to be confirmed, uh, is going to be required of you to fulfill this job? Uh, I think the streets are the main thing. that uh, And having the responsibility of driving not only myself, but the, the rest of the crew around town. Um, you know, that uh, I probably won't be able to make the same little mistakes because people expect a lot more of me. Um, you know, knowing, knowing the city, knowing the hazards of some of the, uh, the buildings and the potential for um, some you know, serious incidents um, is, is really important. And uh, right off the bat, knowing my streets, knowing how to be uh, the best firefighter I can be. Just you got to have a well-rounded education. You know, you got to be good at pretty much everything. I think going through all the uh, JPRs is the biggest thing, and making sure you know all your JPRs, make sure you know all your streets, know what's expected of a new MFD firefighter, knowing your driving, all your EMS skills, keeping your fire skills all up to up to par, and make sure that you're you're doing your your duty every time you come to shift. What future role do you have with their training after they become confirmed and move on to shifts as confirmed firefighters? What we'll do then is we'll monitor um, their training, uh, their daily training, see to it that they get all their level one uh, training, which is typically specialized rescue, uh, that they get their annual wildland training and their annual EMS training. Also, we'll try to work with them to map out a progression through their first five to ten years, um, things that they should be picking up along the way. The reason firefighters are cross-trained as EMTs in the city of Missoula is it's just an integral part of our job. Um, we are stationed throughout the city strategically to respond for a myriad of emergencies within a very short time frame and so having all firefighters be EMTs and or paramedics provides an immediate sort of reaction force, if you would, for citizens of Missoula. Are there any setbacks that could possibly delay a uh, trainee's confirmation? Yes, uh, if, if they were proving uh, deficient in one area, um, typically that, that might be streets or um, they're just not getting, getting a certain part of, of what it means to be a firefighter here, uh, that could delay it. And the thing is, is as a rookie firefighter, they're typically going to be a member of a four-man team. Uh, as a confirmed firefighter, they become a member of a three-man team, which places a lot more weight and responsibilities on their shoulders. After one year of rigorous testing and training, the recruits become confirmed firefighters with our department. 
They are capable of driving the apparatus and working on any emergency scene. While all of the department's training isn't as elaborate and as exciting as the live fire practice scene here, it all helps prepare Missoula's firefighters for real-world emergencies. For all of our new recruits, there may be some stumbles along the way, but training can help them get back up and prepare them for larger, more complicated, and more unexpected emergencies. Breaking news tonight, a fiery explosion ripped through a Missoula man's house and garage, setting him on fire. Look at the incredible video taken just before sunset. Firefighters say it looks like the man was making fireworks in his garage when something went terribly wrong. The garage exploded and the house went up in flames. By choosing to become firefighters, we all understand that when the tones go off, it means it's time to put that training to good use.